Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I'm hope I pray that you all had a wonderful Christmas. Even here. Because I sure <laughs> did with the family. And it's good to be here to praise the Lord. Yes. So we're asking you to sing with us as we raise our voices to the King of Kings. And today we feel so blessed because this is our last Sabbath of the year. Isn't this is a big blessing we hear? Amen. Amen. Please uh, raise your voice and then let we all praise the Lord. Please sing with us. Sing. <laughs> Behold! 
place the congregation stand.
Be with us in a special way. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Let us say. Amen. You can be seen. We all can be seen. Good morning and welcome, saints. Yeah, I see one. Okay, I see a first time. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Would you just tell us who you are? <laughs> oh, I thought I saw a hand someplace else. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Come on. Why don't you stand up so we can see you? So we can see you. This <coughs> lady. Yes. And this is your first time in our midst, huh? We hope you don't make it your last. Uh, you got a good friend named Mary. She's, you know, she's always got somebody she's walking with in the church. I said, praise the Lord. Mary, I'm going to be like you one of these days. Uh, anyone else? Did, did I miss someone? Yes, please. Amen, amen, amen. Now, you all can't be first-time visitors but one time. From now on, we will consider you all family, so come see us. One more? Please. <laughs> okay, very well, amen. Mm hmm. Okay, very well, very well, very well. Amen. You, you, you're thinking about moving into the area? I said, you're thinking about moving into the area? Amen. <laughs> well, come see us, come see us, come see us. Come see us. Do, do I have everyone now? Saints, I'd like to say this. There have been a few cases of COVID. Um, nobody is, 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 I think it's less effective than a strong cold, but people have been going through it and nobody wants it. Uh, I would encourage you, don't, don't stop washing your hands, please. I don't think it is as much airborne as it is placing that hand in your mouth before you washed it off. So, I mean, I don't want to act like a father or anything, but I sure would like to just remind you to, to wash your hands. Now, in the pews, there, there is a prayer card. And um, there's a lot of latitude to that prayer card. You can... Um, Contact our pastor. I'm not the pastor. <laughs> I just have the privilege to stand here and do a few announcements when he's not here. Amen. But our pastor is who? Dr. Dan Schiffbau. <laughs> and all of his information is there. And whatever critical need that you may have, you can contact him and um but if you want to talk to me about anything you can talk to me too i'll just pass it on but uh on the prayer cards i mean whatever you would like to do if you want to change a membership or you want to 
I have a visit from the pastor. Uh, uh, if you want to even be anointed, whatever it is, you're going through something. But primarily, we use the prayer cards for things that you would like for it, saints to remember in prayer. So you can take out one of those prayer cards. When it becomes prayer time, we're going to come around and pick up those prayer cards and um, we're going to pray over them here. After service, the elders are going to gather and pray. And even on Wednesday night, well, we didn't have prayer meeting this past Wednesday night, but the coming Wednesday night, I'm sure that we'll be back here. Pastor will be here and we'll be having prayer meeting here and we will remember those cards or whatever it is that's, that's your concern. Now, uh, pastor's not here. He has another church up in Titusville, and he's doing something that they call a Jericho walk. He did it here last year. It, how, how many of us recall? Well, what happens is um, <clears throat> it mimics the experience that the Jews had after the cross over in Jordan and walked around Jericho each day, um, one time around the city. And on the seventh day, they went around the city how many times? Seven times. And what happened? The wall came down, wall came down church. So Pastor has implemented this uh, for the first of the year. He has something called the Jericho Walk. And he walks around in the church. And whatever your problem is, you write it on a piece of paper, and he wants to bring that problem down. So um, he's in Titusville today. He began at 430, and he's encouraging as many of us as possible to come on down and join with him on this Jericho walk. And um, if you've got some problems, I think you need to go down there and join with him, even if you don't have any problem. Maybe you know somebody who got some problems and go down there and be a part of the Jericho walk. But after um, he's going to begin down there at 430, but 6 o'clock, he's going to be back here in the church because we are having something that we call an agape feast. We're going to bring out some nuts and we're going to bring out some finger foods and we're just going to have a sit down and have a Good time talking about what our year has been like and what we anticipate happening for us in the future, in the coming, in, in 2023. And so we need to come together and, um, and, and as the year, um, as we bring the year in, let's bring it in together. All right. We're, we're looking for the sea at the Agape Feast. At 6 o'clock, we're looking also to see you at the Jericho Walk at 4.30 in Titusville. Okay, I think that brings an end to my announcements. Make sure that there's nothing else. Nobody else has anything, right? Okay, very well. We can move forward with our program as we follow the bulletin. Amen? Amen. Okay, very well. I tell you what, I did omit something. Generally right here, we get up and go around and shake somebody's hand and say, welcome to the house of the Lord, okay? Let's do that right now. You know. Welcome to the house of the Lord. <laughs> it's a little bit lighter. Yeah. Thank you. 
comes another beautiful girl. Oh my goodness, you are just growing up so fast. Yeah. When I saw that our speaker today was going to talk about the gift, I remembered a story I heard when I was only 10 years old. And can you believe I remember a story that long? Wow, I can still remember that story when I was 10 years old, and it was told by a lady who was really quite old at the time. In fact, she was born in the 1800s, so that isn't even the 20th century, that's the 19th century. And she was quite old when she came to our church, and she told a story about something that happened to her when she was a little girl. Now, you girls are all dressed in something pretty, right? And that is called fashion. Yeah, fashion. And we get all attached to fashion when we get, we girls do even when we're young. We want to have on our nice pretty things. We like the dress we pick out. Well, when she was a little girl, there was a fashion called wearing mitts, M-I-T-T-S, mitts. And those were like gloves, and they were made of a material sort of like my dress, kind of lacy and frilly. And they did not have any fingertips. And they weren't gloves. Your fingers went in. You had a ruffle here. And your fingertips showed, but that was the fashion. And all her friends had mitts. And she didn't have any. And she begged and cried to her parents, please, I want some mitts. But her parents didn't have a lot of money, and they just couldn't go to the store and buy some. But she kept saying, I want a pair of mitts. And so... To her wonderful and great surprise, on her birthday, she got a pair of black lace mitts. And oh, was she a proud and happy girl. Because she could now put them on and go out with her friends and be just like them. And she loved to wear them to church. They were her very favorite, favorite thing that she owned. Well, one Sabbath, she was in church, and the pastor told such a wonderful story about the gift of Jesus and his life, and what an amazing gift that was. And he made a plea with the, at the end of the service for a special offering where Anyone in the church could give a special gift to Jesus. And the offering plate came by, and it was going by, and it came by, and it came in. Oh, I forgot to tell you her name. Her name was Sally. It came to Sally. And what do you think she gave? Her mitts. She took her mitts off, and she put them in the offering plate. It was the only thing that she had that she could think to give to Jesus. And you know what? Do you think Jesus appreciated that gift? Yes. I think Jesus appreciated that gift with all his heart. Because that young girl gave up the most important thing that she had that she was willing to give to Jesus. that. Would anyone like to pray? Amen. I don't know if you could hear that prayer, but it was awesome. Thank you so much. Thankful. All right. You might get your baskets and collect collecting dollars for the school. The school is planning to open. 
It's still in the works, so give those dollars, give you those gifts, right? Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fair before him all the earth. At this time, our offering today will go to Florida Education. And um, we are still here by the grace of God. He has given us life, health, and strength. He has blessed us abundantly, and we have come through, and we're now in the last day of the year, 2022, and we have an awful lot to give thanks to, to the Lord. So will our deacon come forth? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for your blessings that you have given to us so freely, dear God. Lord, you are such a merciful Father. We do not deserve your goodness, but we thank you for you look beyond our faults and see our needs, and you give us mercy, and you give us one more day. Lord, as we come before you this morning, to return your tithe and to give a free will offering. May we give it with a willing heart. May it go forth to further thy cause in the earth and may the work be finished that you shall come to take us home. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning again, saints. Those prayer cards we told you about a little bit earlier, while he's picking them up, if there's somebody who has something special to tell us about this morning, be brief, please. Amen, amen. Special blessing for the first for the first of the year. Yes, man. Yeah, um, a man ran a, ran a stop sign and almost hit her, and a car in front of me stopped because somebody was doing an illegal U-turn on the grass median. And, the, and I tell you, God protected because we came that close to car accidents. Amen. God is good. Huh? All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Um, let us, as much as possible, let us kneel before the Lord. Father in heaven, dear Lord, we're just, we're just blessed and we're thankful, dear Lord, to be, be in your house, dear Lord. Um, it's the last day of this year as we embark on a new year, dear Lord. We pray, dear Father, that you be with us in a special way. Um, there was testimonies, dear Lord, of your goodness. Uh, we all know how good you are, dear Lord. We know that you left heaven. You didn't have to and came to this earth, dear Lord, in the likeness of sinful flesh. You, God, and even gave your life, dear Lord, that we might be restored, that we might can return to our home in heaven, dear Father. We're thankful this morning, Father. We're thankful for Jesus and for all that he's done. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to be with us. Uh, be with our visitors in a special way. They came a long ways to be with us, Lord. And I, I pray, dear Lord, that you will send them away with a blessing, dear Lord. We just want to thank you and praise you for all that you're doing for us, dear Lord. We pray in a special way for our church, our church family. Uh, we've had a wonderful year. We baptized quite a few people, dear Lord. And we look forward in great anticipation of uh, baptizing even more their Lord because this is what you would have us to do and Lord we pray their father that you help us their Lord that uh, all of us will always be on our best behavior there that we will act like Christian we'll live like Christian look like Christian so people can see Christ in us we're just so thankful their father we pray in a special way this morning also um, uh, we pray for the agape feast that we're about to have there, Lord. We pray that we have a good turnout, that people will come and bring finger food, and that we will worship and praise you, and thank you for bringing us safely through another year. And those there, Lord, who are able to go down and be a part of the, 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 the Jericho walk, we pray there, Lord, that they will take up the initiative and go down there, there, Lord, and be blessed, their Father. We also want to ask a special blessing this morning for our man servant, their Lord, as he prepared. He prepared, their Lord. And now we, we pray that you would bring him clarity of thought. Remind him of those things, their Lord, that he had planned to tell us, their Father, that you gave him to bring to us this morning. We pray, Father, that you bless him in a special way. Take a live coal from the altar, their Lord, and touch his lips. We don't want to leave here, dear Lord, the same way we came. We want to be drawn closer to you. We believe that that's what the Christian life is all about. Each and every day being drawn closer and closer to you. We just want to thank you and praise you for all that you do. We thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus again, dear Lord, and pray that you continue to bless this program as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we ask it all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen and thank you. Thank you. Praise you there, Lord. 
Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 19. For as by one man disobedient, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedient, many will be made righteous. May the Lord had a rich blessing to the reading of his word. Um, Sister Esther will give us our special music this morning, after which... Our brother, our elder from Titusville, Elder Ernie Wells, will give us the spoken word. May the Lord be blessed. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone and um, also a happy new year. It's right around the corner and thank God we're here. I usually like to let you know um, what inspires me to write whatever poem that I write. Um, I don't take any credit for anything written because I know it's only from God. And um, what happened one day, one of my sisters, uh, she has a program on YouTube um, which she calls Worship Wednesday. And she was telling me something, and to be honest, I can't remember what she was saying, but she said something like, everyone has a story. And it's like, it just clicked. I said, you know, I just started laughing. I said, well, I feel a poem coming on. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> days later, uh, this is what, <coughs> excuse me, Days later, this is what God gave to me. So it's um, entitled, Everyone Has a Story. And I believe this is for probably millions of believers who have um, uh, been through certain things in their lives from the past and then they turn their lives over and they're living this silent pain and just not able to put it into words, whether in a poem or a song. And I also believe that God um, definitely um, allows, whether it's a sermon, a song, or a poem, he always allows it to touch even one heart. So therefore, this um, poem, everyone has a story before I sing. If only we could keep in mind whatever we go through in this life, good and bad, it all sums up to our life story. Your story may have started from the time you were a child running wild and free. You fell to the ground after climbing a tree but guess what? You didn't stay there. You got up, brushed yourself off, and maybe even cried. But life started all over again. As time moved on, you finally learned that the growing up years were only stepping stones, leading you into the future. But you often rush through life without any real leadership, no real sense of value, and no guidance. You did everything in silence and in total defiance. 
as you got older, your story continued. And all you wanted was to find that right place in life to call your own, only to realize you're not fully grown. Hurry makes waste, they often say, but you had to do things your own way. Therefore, you made many mistakes along the way, which led you into a destructive lifestyle, more temptations, and many other life-changing situations. One day you got tired of all the mess and you got down on your knees to pray, not knowing exactly what to say. You felt the darkness of the walls closing in and you felt so very lost. But just like the prodigal son, you turned from your wayward life and you poured your heart out to God and he heard you. He was there for you with open and loving arms, and he totally restored you. God could have settled the score and gave you what you really deserve, but instead, as you got closer to him, he got closer to you. He then assured you that your sins were no more, and you believed God's holy word. You were so happy and so grateful, but you had one problem. Many who knew of your old life would not let it go. Even the church folks chuckled as you walked by and even made jokes. They refused to let you live in the peace and newness of life. They still treated you as though you were the same person of many years ago. They treated you as an outcast while you're still clinging to the foot of the cross. They wanted to clothe you with the same filthy robe that your heavenly father stripped off of you. The one that you gave up so willingly for his robe of righteousness. I will now say to you, wherever you are, I see you, my sister, and I hear you, my brother. But don't you ever give up because Jesus drank that bitter cup of shame and disgrace for all of us a long time ago. The people with that mindset doesn't really know your savior and redeemer, the one who causes the blind to see and the lame to walk. Therefore, forgive them for they know not what they do. And you serve a God who changed lives. He changes people's story every day. He changed yours and he certainly changed minds. No matter what the people say, don't ever let them tell you the ending to your story because they were not given that authority. Only God has that control. And as long as you continue to follow in his footsteps, he will never leave you nor forsake you. And this is a forever plan. Never fear because these words of comfort are totally free and guaranteed. And you need only to turn your eyes upon Jesus and remember your story continues. Thank you. Now, um, I will offer this song and I pray that at least one heart is touched. I found my Lord, it wasn't on the mountain, not in the valley, but it was on my knees. I found my Lord, once I was blind, I could not see the glory of Jesus 
so rich and free I've heard about him the man of Galilee I cried out Lord oh help me please down on my knees I found my Jesus down on my knees I found my Lord it wasn't on the mountain not in the valley but it was on my knees I found my Lord he took my hand I held up high and he saw the tears that I have cried oh he came down and held me tight and he said my child you are mine I went down on my knees and I asked the Lord have mercy please he had compassion he showed me love now I praise the Lord above down on my knees I found my Jesus down on my knees I found my Lord it wasn't on the mountain not in the valley but it was on my knees I found my Lord but it was on my knees I found my Lord but it was on my knees I found my Lord thank you Hope everybody had a good week, a nice Christmas, and we've gotten through another tough year. And let's hope that 2023 is going to be a little bit easier on us. Before I start, I like to do a little exercise. I like to have everybody just take a deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth and just push all the cares of this world outside these walls because that's where they belong, okay? Today's message is actually based on a section of a book written by Pastor Calvin Rock. He's been a member of the Seventh-day Adventist community for over 60 years. He served as president of Oakwood College, vice president of the General Conference, chair of Loma Linda University and Loma Linda University Medical Center Boards. He's pastored in the United States, evangelized abroad in Russia, England, Africa, and Romania. He's written a total of nine books and multiple journal articles. And his main focus of his ministry is on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is going to cover a fairly large section, but before anybody panics, I've cut it down to the most important elements. But I look at it a little differently because I look at these elements not as pieces of a puzzle or pieces that 
fit together, but it's the facets of a gem. I don't know if any of you are aware of how, how hard it is to cut a diamond. It takes great patience, training, and skill to properly take a raw piece of diamond and turn it into something that you can wear on your hand or in a necklace. One slight mistake could ruin a gem. So we're going to go through these facets, and like I say before, anybody panics, because there are 17 of them. We're going to stay mostly with scripture. The first one is our spotless gift, and this was our uh, scripture reading from Romans 5, 19. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. And who was that one man? Adam. Also by one man's obedience, many were made righteous. Who was that man? Jesus Christ, correct. See, it's easy. The second facet is it's our greatest gift, and we're looking at Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In other words, he is our support. He is our backup. He is the one that provides us with the armor that we need. The third facet, it's a ready gift. This is seen in Matthew 28 through 10. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired at the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. But when those who came first supposed that they should receive more, they likewise received a denarius. I mean, you might think they'd be upset, but they had agreed on a specific fee for their services. But what this passage is really telling us is it's not so important as when you receive Christ. It's the fact that you do. Even if it's later in life, but what you should be aware of the opportunities that you missed. If you had known him sooner, you would have had more time to work in his service. It's a free gift, Romans 5, 15. But when the first came, they supposed not to take offense. For one died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ abounds to many. It's hard to take a gift from someone you don't know. So we have to teach people about Christ so that they know to be able to accept his gift. A fragrant gift. We're gonna go back to the Old Testament for this one. Exodus 30, 35 to 36. You should make of these an incense, a compound, according to the art of the perfumer, salted, pure and holy, and you shall beat some of it very fine and put some of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of meeting where I will meet you. It shall be most holy to you. Where are they talking about here? They're talking about the sanctuary. They had the veil between the most holy place and the holy place. And the incense would rise up and pass over the top of the, the uh, barrier there into the most holy place. A seasoned gift, Mark 9, 49 and 50. For everyone will be seasoned by fire and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good. But if salt loses its flavor, how will you season with it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. Jesus himself said, we are the salt of the earth. It's a precious gift. Matthew 13, 45 to 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he found one pearl, 
of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. We know this story. We know that the merchant represents us and that when we find Christ, we will be willing to give up all we have for him. It's a necessary gift. Matthew 22, 11 and 12. But when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And the man was speechless. He's talking here about the marriage between the church and Christ. Christ being the husband, the church being the bride. We don't always come to Jesus with the right garments, but Jesus will take the dirty garments of sin and give us the garments that have been washed in his blood. It's a costly gift. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Crucifixion was the, absolutely the worst possible torture before you passed, because your own body was your worst, own worst enemy. They had dri driven nails through your feet so that every time you tried to raise yourself, it would cause pain. Eventually, you'd lose the ability to breathe. The curse, though, is the fact that for the first time in the life of Jesus Christ, he was cut off from the Father, totally and completely, because he was taking all the sins of this world, then, now, and until he returns on himself. The best gift, Luke 15, 22. The Father said to his servants, bring out the best robe, put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, sandals on his feet. You know this story too, the prodigal son. Takes his inheritance early, squanders it in a foreign country. Famine comes. Of course, now he has no friends because he has no money. He ends up doing the lowest possible job that anyone who is Hebrew could possibly do. Feeding pigs. And then he realizes in his mind and in his heart he was wrong. He remembers how well his father treated his servants. So he endeavored to return home expecting to be a servant. But when the father saw him in a very undignified manner, he ran to him, grabbed him, hugged him, and directed his servants to take care of him. He was happy because the son he had lost in a type of death, had been reborn. It's a priceless gift. Matthew 16, 26. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? You know where this relates to. When Satan was tempting Jesus. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he, Satan said, if you will worship me, I will give you all of this. But what would have Jesus had to give up? His soul. It's an exalted gift. Again, we're going to go back a little bit. Go to Isaiah 62.10. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, take out the stones, lift up the banner for the peoples. Very similar to what John the Baptist was saying before Christ came to him, where the mountains would be flattened, the valleys would be filled, the way would be made smooth for the Christ. Isaiah is basically saying the same thing. Prepare the narrow way for those who will follow Jesus. It's our qualifying gift. For if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ, 
our second Adam. It's a permanent gift. Hebrews 7.25 Therefore he is also able to save the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Remember what Jesus said, I am the door, I am the way. You come to God through me. A coveted gift, Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We know where Jesus said this, on the Sermon on the Mount. It's an ethical gift. Hebrews 2.17 Therefore all things he had made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, and to make propetition for the sins of the people. The key word here is propetition. He's taking our place. He's taking punishment for us so that we may be with him. Finally, and this is one I added in addition to what was in Pastor Rock's book, because I believe it was a wondrous gift. And it happened, and this is in Luke 5, 12, 15, and it happened when he was in a certain city that behold, a man with leprosy saw Jesus. And he fell on his face and imploring him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately the leprosy left him. But Jesus charged him to tell no one. Well, believe it or not, and you probably know this already, if you tell somebody not to say something, what do you think is going to happen? Right? Well, you weren't far off. He says, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. We also want to look at Mark 2, 1 through 12. And again he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that we, he was in a house. And you may know this story very well. Immediately many gathered together to hear that there was no room to receive them, not even near the door, but he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic, carried on a litter by four men. When they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof from where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. But the scribes and the Pharisees who were sitting there reasoned in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God and him alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus, he said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you? Or arise and take up your bed and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sin. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We've never seen anything like this.
Ellen G. White wrote in Desire of Ages, pages 270, the paralytic found in Christ's healing both for the soul and the body. The spiritual healing was followed by physical restoration. This lesson should not be overlooked. There are today thousands suffering from physical disease who, like the paralytic, are longing for the message, thy sins are forgiven, the burden of sin with its unrest and unsatisfied desires is the foundation of all of their maladies. The peace which he alone can give will impart vigor to the mind and the health of the body. Let's continue on. Verse 13. Then he went out again by the sea, and all the multitude came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax office, and said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many, and they followed him. When the scribes and the Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician. But those who are sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let's turn to Luke 2, 8, 14. And this is what really the Christmas season is all about. And you may have heard this many times. In fact, one of my favorite Christmas specials when I was young was the Charlie Brown Christmas. And I always remember that one part where Charlie Brown's saying, I don't understand. And Linus just walks out on the stage and says, light, please. And he quotes from Luke. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord showed round them, and they were sore afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for to all people. For there is born to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And there's a little bit of Charlie Brown in all of us. As I said before, 2022 has been a difficult year for a lot of us, myself included. Last May, I got probably one of the worst calls any husband could ever get from the Holmes Regional, not Holmes Regional, but the uh, Orlando Regional Medical Center. My wife had been in a car accident. And the worst of it was she was a victim of insurance fraud. She was check braked. She swerved to avoid it, rolled her car into a ditch and into a tree. The individual who caused it took off, according to the highway patrol. They're still looking for him. But there's not much that they can have to go by. But there was one person who saw what happened and called 911. Because where her car ended up, you could drive by it in the middle of the day and never see it. Fortunately, there was somebody there who did a Christian act and saved my wife's life. 
She's still recovering. They said it'll take at least a year. Multiple skull fractures, broken bones, cuts, bruises. The only part of her car that was still intact was the driver's seat. The only airbag that didn't deploy was the one in the steering column. And for her sake, because she's a very short woman, and she sits very close to the steering wheel, that would, could have been very harmful to her. I thank God that he took care of her and was watching over her. And as much as it's hard for me to say this, I will forgive the individual who tried to cause the incident. There are many out there who wouldn't. But I think that he will find, or she will find, the right path someday. At least I pray that. And maybe the fact that uh, they failed in their attempt may be helpful to them. We've come, as I said, to the end of a long year. 2023 is yet to be for a while yet. We can only pray that it will be better than last one. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit be with us each day to guide us, to protect us, to watch over us, and to shine through us for all to see. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Dear Lord, we thank you for this Sabbath. And we thank you for all that you do for us, all you have done and all you are yet to do. And we pray that we are here to see your return. Yes, God. Coming in the clouds with all the angels from heaven with you. As that will be the only time there will be silence in heaven. Be with us, Lord. Protect us through the coming week to another Sabbath. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.